In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the build material idea inside of Autodesk Inventor. As you recall, when we put parts together into assemblies and subassemblies, it has data that carries with it wherever that file goes. Things like part numbers and descriptions and stock numbers and material properties, these are stored in the file's I properties. So if I were to double click on one of my parts here inside this design, I made this subassembly and I activate it. When I look at the I properties of this, right click on this guy here and go to I properties, I can start seeing information here like the physical information, so the material, pound mass, area, volume, and such. There's also other tabs up here on project status. You can actually create your own custom ones too. So if I needed a SAP number, maybe I use SAP, and I come in here and I can fill that value in. This is data that can carry with the file wherever it goes. Now, doing this at the assembly level means that when I save the assembly, it has to update that file. It has to write back to it. Again, assembly doesn't contain the parts. It just contains hyperlinks to the parts. So now when I save this build material file that we've been working in from our working files directory, you can see it's going to prompt me to save the assembly joints 5 IAM because a change was made to it. So I have to go ahead and then force that to overwrite the file on disk. Now, it seems rather mundane that if I had to go to every single file to adjust those types of properties, it might be rather tedious. I don't want to do that. What I can do is go to the Build Material Editor. This is something inside of the assembly environment. It can also be accessed inside the drawings. So if I go up here to my Manage tab, and I go to the Build Materials command on the Manage panel, it will launch the editor. Here I can start seeing my part numbers. I can see data about these, like stock number and description. If I were to fill anything out here in the editor and then save the assembly, it would force that change in the metadata back down to the files. So it's kind of a one-stop shop to adjust all your design criteria. You don't see material there. You don't see vendor. You don't see similar ones. Maybe you don't see SAP number. That's okay. You can add columns here. If you have a custom column like I did with the SAP number, you can also create your own custom column. And even if the file didn't have that I property, Adding it here would then force it into that component or into that part. It's a very handy way to get your data on a line before you start creating documentation of your assemblies or your parts. When you start thinking about a parts list or a build material, these terms sound synonymous. A build material is the overriding intelligence. It's what we're looking at here. This is the main sort of intelligence to the files. The parts list is just an on-sheet representation of the build material. If you edit the parts list and you modify it, it doesn't force any changes like the build material does. So this is a much more powerful tool than the parts list. This is just the intelligence that the software keeps behind the scenes for you. I'm going to go ahead and close the editor here. And this has just been a quick look at the concept here of the build material inside of Inventor.